Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is Sunday, July 22nd, 2018. Uh, today we're celebrating Christmas in July. That's when we have our members bring in non-perishable food items to help replenish our food pantry. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. The flowers on the chancel stands today are donated by Joni Schmidt in loving memory of her sister, Nikki Linder. St. John's 8 o'clock service is at the Melody Cruise Inn Drive-In, uh, east of Springfield on Route 40. We have our service there from Labor Memorial Day to Labor Day, rain or shine. Our pastor is the Reverend John H. Pollock. Our organist is Greg Nolte. This week's the Clark County Fair. St. John's has a booth in the Mercantile Building. Stop by and visit us. St. John's has a outreach store, open Monday through Friday, closed on Thursday from 9.30 to 1. The food pantry is on Wednesdays, 9 to 10.45, and Rainbow Table is every Friday from noon to 1. because of uh, us celebrating Christmas in July to replenish the food pantry. We will have a Christmas service today. Now we begin our worship with the singing of 
hymn number 275 in the back of your worship book, Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn number 275.
you shepherd your people faithfully feeding and protecting us. Deal each of us and make us a whole people that we may abide the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to the reading of God. Connie Singleton will be doing the readings. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from Jeremiah, 23rd chapter. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered the flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And his day, in his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. of the apostles and prophets, 
with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
because of that, they were separated from God. But here St. Paul tells us that in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off from God, separated from God, had no idea who God really is, had no idea how to connect to God, had no idea how to approach God. Now, you have been brought in. How? By the blood of Christ. That term brought near means to be brought close at hand. We've gone from being separated from God to being right close to his chest. Being almost next to Jesus. And this all comes about through the blood of Christ. That's why Christ came to shed his blood on the cross. To atone for the sins we commit. To redeem us, that is, buy us back from sin, death, and the power of death. So that now we could stand for God. We could have a place with God. Instead of being viewed as these pagan sinners with no hope of salvation, we've now been brought close through the blood of Jesus. So the first reason why Jesus came was because we were separated from God. Second reason was so that we could have peace between God and us, God and one another, and God and our Jewish friends. For he himself is our peace, who has made, verse 14, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. For Jesus is our peace. That word peace here means to join one is separate. As I already said, we were separated from God, we were also separated from each other. There was all kinds of ethnic clashes and racial clashes and economic clashes in the ancient world, as this unfortunately there still is today. Rome was a center of all time, but they don't know what person. Roman world knew nothing about the Far East, <laughs> knew nothing, of course, about of the Americas. But throughout the Mediterranean, Western, Eastern Europe, into the Middle East, Iraq, Iran, Rome, and North Africa, Rome, or Rome. And so they got themselves appeared in every other culture because they believe in that. But one thing that was interesting is that in order to have peace in the empire, Rome made it easy to become a Roman citizen when he went born. To Paul, a Jew, brought up in Tarsus is a Roman citizen. Because his dad had won Roman citizenship for some reason. Unlike other empires, where if you weren't of that empire, you couldn't become a member of it, you were always a slave or you were always looked down upon. Rome would make you a Roman citizen and you were equal with every natural Roman citizen. But there was still this need <coughs> for peace. Peace between the people and God, peace between peoples. And so through Jesus Christ, what was separated is brought together. He also says, who has made us both one. The word both means two parties or two parties, <coughs> meaning Jew and Gentile. He's Jesus brought this peace between Jew and Gentile. You didn't have to become a Jew first to become a Christian and have salvation. You simply believe in Jesus Christ. Made it simple. So that we could be here. So he, remember, and because this piece, St. Paul goes on to write that there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, but we're all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. That only comes about through Jesus Christ. So Christ came to bring this peace with us and God and us and each other. Uh, when we're broken down, it means to dissolve something. What did he break down? The hostility that was between us. That word hostility means hatred or enmity. There was hatred and enmity between peoples, races, culture, so forth, as I said. And with some people, there was enmity between them and God, just like there is today. There's some people who hate the idea of God. They want to think they're in control of everything. 
They want to think they can control their life. They can control their future. That they don't need a God. They don't need a Savior. They're just greater than they are. And so there's a hatred there for God. Christ came to break down that barrier. So that we can have fellowship with God. And one another. That's why Christ did. Third reason was to abolish the law. As a way of salvation. To abolish the law as a way of salvation. Verse 15. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, so making peace. Abolishing the law. That word abolish means to render something not. The Jews believe salvation came through. In order to protect the law, scholars over the years, rabbis, had put fences around the original, making more and more demands in order to protect it from breaking the most important. So this just made a heavy burden on it. Made it almost impossible for anyone to have salvation. So Jesus comes and he abolishes that. He fulfills the law and his commands so that salvation is simply by grace through faith, apart from works of the law. We do nothing, God and Christ does everything. All we do is believe. All we do is respond to that love God has shown us through the sending of the Son so that we can be His own and live under Him and His kingdom. Now, that does not mean that we totally ignore the Ten Commandments. As an Old Testament professor, Dr. From the late Dr. Solomon used to say, regarding the Ten Commandments, he said they were, quote, loving means for living. In other words, the Ten Commandments still guide our life as to how to live in relationship towards God and one another through Christ. But we don't abide by them in order to earn salvation. We abide by them in order to get us I'm the Lord your God, you shall know who I perform you. You're going to trust God for all things. Obviously, you believe in Jesus Christ, you put God first. You should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Fortunately, that's a commandment that seems like even Christians break to us, using God's name in an improper way. Remember the Saturday that keep it holy. We should so fear and love and trust God that we do not despise His word or the preaching of it, but gladly hear it. On your Father and Mother. So that there will be tranquility in society, not chaos in man. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet. We follow these, not again, not earning salvation, but as a response to that love God has shown us. We cannot live in peace with each other very well if we're coveting what our neighbor has, if we're lying about it. If we're uh, taking our, spouse, our friend's spouse, or if we're murdering someone. See, that's what that fifth commandment really means. It means murder. It doesn't mean kid, covering all types of kid. People over the years have said, well, I can't do this because God says we should not kill. Actually, it means murder. It fits what we describe as first degree murder. Second, premeditated murder. Murder to get rid of uh, someone who is in competition. Murder in order to take something from someone that you can't have otherwise. Murder uh, somebody because you just don't like. That's why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, you have heard say you should not murder. But I say if you hit somebody in your heart, you've already murdered them. Because that hate is like murder. You're making that person not worth a lot. But it doesn't mean you can't defend yourself against someone who's attacked. It doesn't mean a nation cannot defend itself against an aggressor. It means murder for convenience or whatever. Commandments 4 through 10, most nations of the world have those in their lives. In their secular lives. Because they have to do that. But they're not the way of salvation. Because my Old Testament confesses that there are God or God of Our salvation comes through Jesus Christ. So 
So he abolished the law so he might create a people. That means to compose or form a people of faith, a community of faith. That's what the church is. The church is a community of faith. The church is a group of people coming together, proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord, to worship him and praise him, to gather at his table, to receive his body and blood, to receive the assurance of forgiveness of sin and the promise of everlasting life. And it is a community that is so thankful to God for what he has given us out of grace that we want to share it with everyone else. We want to share it with those who don't know Jesus Christ. And we're not to be intimidated by a society who tells us, practice our faith on Sunday and forgive the rest of the world. That is not how the Christian church operates and never has. That's one thing that Maybe is a reason why the church today in America, in certain denominations, especially, is suffering is because we make things too easy. We forgot the idea of commitment. I remember a conversation I had with, I was serving Griffin Lever on the Northwest Indiana, which bordered Gary Camp, Indiana, Lake Michigan. And I was talking to a retired Lutheran pastor, and he was talking about how. Shepherds come at first night, not for having 
that would show Mary and Joseph and the men of Jesus in a manger in a stable made out of wood, and the beams of the roof on the cross, and the light caused the shadow of the cross to be over the baby Jesus in the manger. That was a very good Christmas because that was explaining why Christ came. He came not to be adored as a little baby. He came not to be adored or acclaimed because he showed the power of God. Even people like to know that today. He came as Jeremiah had prophesied in our first lesson to bring salvation to the world. To be that righteous branch. To go to the cross and willingly give up his life. Shed his blood so that we might be his own and live under him. And the sixth reason that why Christ came to earth that first Christmas is to open the door. Verse 18. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. We have access to the Father. That word access uh, means to open a way to something. It means to admit someone into a presence. It means to have the necessary initiative. Put it in our modern understanding. You want to go to a play, you want to go to a concert, you want to go to a ball game, you want to go to other events, the derby, or triple crown race, or the Daytona 500, or whatever you're into, uh, the, the tennis match, the British Open, the Masters, whatever you do, you have to have the initiative. God, which passes all in the stand, keep your hearts and mouths to Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing angels we have heard on high, hymn number 289, from the back of your hymn number 289.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Amen. We conclude our worship with Go Tell the Hymn number 290. Of your worship. Hymn number 290. replenish our food pantry. Join us next week at the drive-in at 8 o'clock, Melody Cruise Inn, east of, on, east of Springfield on uh, Route 40, or join us this week at the Clark County Fair in the Mercantile Building. Thank you for joining us.